There's cold composting and there's hot composting. Two different processes, two totally different end products. One is perfectly safe to use in your garden, your growing spaces, and to put back in your animal grazing spaces. One is not, especially if you're experiencing a lot of weeds and parasites. So let's talk about it. All right, before we start composting, let's talk about what should go in your compost heap. Brown or carbon-based compost ingredients are gonna include dead or dried plant matter, fallen leaves that are crunchy, straw or hay, sticks, and cardboard. Green or nitrogen compost items are gonna be things like fresh food scraps, manure, leaves that have fallen and haven't yet dried, and also fresh grass, plant, or weed clippings. A well-balanced compost heap will always have more carbon or brown material than green or nitrogen-based material. You're always gonna to try to aim for two-thirds brown or carbon material to one-third green or nitrogen-based material. A pile like this is an example of a cold composting system. We're gonna add some animal manure, maybe some spent straw, weed and yard waste, and some sticks. And when you make a deposit, you might be so good as to top it off with some leaves. Plus sides of a cold composting system, we're letting mother nature naturally take its course. We're not worried about monitoring aeration and moisture, and we're not worrying about tarping it. Instead, it's naturally decomposing, and eventually we'll come back in nine to 12 months, or maybe even more, depending on the contents, and we'll be able to use it as a conditioner in pastures or fields, or even orchard spaces where you're not worried about grass or weeds. The downside of cold composting is this does not get hot enough to kill weed seeds and pathogens. Therefore, if I were to take this when it's finished and apply it to my garden, I would have weed seeds and grass sprouting up. We do not want that. If we want to be able to use our compost in our growing spaces, such as in a garden, we need to hot compost. Whether you're cold or hot composting, you want to try to add that ratio of one third to two thirds of your ingredients. But instead of just leaving it for mother nature, you're gonna add a tarp. And because I'm in a wet climate here in central New Jersey, I don't have to add extra moisture. But if you're in a dry climate, you may. The end result of hot compost is beautiful, oh my goodness, rich compost that is ready for your garden. Because this was under a tarp, it was allowed to heat up and all of the microbes activated and killed off pathogens that affect animals in your grazing spaces. Um, kills off parasites and kills off grass and many stubborn weeds. We are talking about getting up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That is hot. Now, if you're in a climate where you're worried about heat or have burn bans, you're gonna have to keep an eye on your heat by turning it and watering it as necessary. This is finished hot compost under the tarp. Look at how rich and amazing that is. It's moist, it's filled with worms, no discernible ingredients. Oh my gosh, and it's as black as chocolate cake. It's gorgeous. Hot composted material can be ready very quickly. We're talking in as little as three to six months, depending on the temperatures it reaches and the contents that are inside of it in the first place. Here are the two finished compost products. This is hot composted for six months under a tarp. This is cold composted out in the open for a year. If you wanna use your finished compost in your animal grazing spaces or in your vegetable growing spaces, you may really wanna consider hot composting. If you are just using to use it as a soil conditioner, maybe spread it around trees in an orchard, then maybe cold composting is gonna be a better fit for you. The end product determines the process. Both are very approachable. Both create a product that you can use to return nutrients, mycorrhiza, and microbes back into the soil.